So, yeah, I'm Patrick. Um, I graduated Basque in 2017. Uh, I majored in sciences and engineering and I minored in uh, cultures. Uh, I kind of did physics and maths uh, and uh, on the culture side I think I did philosophy uh, and I did French um, and I kind of got interested more broadly in kind of environmental stuff, sustainability, so I did like environmental physics, um, I did some modules in physical geography um, and yeah I'm now doing a PhD so I want to kind of talk about how I got here because it was kind of a fairly direct trajectory from Basque um, and Basque really set me up pretty well for it. So I took the energy systems module, which is now sustainable energy, I believe, uh, in um, second year. Uh, and uh, the course director, the course leader at the time, uh, was um, offering some internships essentially to be a research assistant um, that summer. So I did that, I did that for two months. Um, I met a guy uh, who was sort of supervising me on this, um, on this role. Um, who had some really interesting projects that he wanted to work on and suggested one of them um, for a dissertation, which I did in my third year. Um, and then applied, so I then sort of, during this time I was getting into computer science coding, particularly machine learning, uh, and that's what this guy was particularly interested in. Uh, and he was like, yeah, you must apply for the um, machine learning MSC at mm. UCL, which is great. Um, and turns out extremely competitive um, so I ended up not getting onto that uh, and I think at which point he might have gone oh I think because this was sort of like April time I think I probably missed a lot of deadlines didn't really know what I was doing and he, he was sort of like you know you're guaranteed to get on it no worries uh, and I think maybe he thought um, yeah okay I've led him down a bit of a um, dead end there so he said well I've got some PhDs coming up why don't you apply for one of them so I applied to one for a PhD um, at the Energy Institute at UCL where he was working and that's where I am now. So I've been doing that for about a year and a half. Um, How, work, Patrick? How could they take you for a PhD without doing the Masters? Particularly because you haven't got on the Masters. Huh? Uh, yeah, so, well, I mean, <laughs> as, as, I understand, like the, yeah, as I understand it, I don't think you technically need... So yeah, important point. You don't technically need a Masters to do a PhD. Um, it will say you need a Masters on just about every application because it's a convenient way to filter people out. But if you're in, if, if particularly if you know someone who you want to do a project with, as I did, um, then that can, you know, there's, no, there's nothing to say you have to have done a master's. Um, and that all sounds, sometimes I kind of tell that story and think, that sounds like I've been incredibly jammy. Um, which in some ways I have, but also it's, that is a very um, you know, popular route to a PhD is you meet someone during your degree, um, they've got some projects, they, they've worked with you, maybe they've supervised a dissertation or something like that, um, and you get, you know, and you have a conversation and they go, why don't you apply to do a PhD with me, there's some funding coming up. Um, so yeah, so I, I, would, I would encourage you, if you're interested, to do, interested in doing a PhD, to think about speaking to academics, um, just trying to make any kind of connections with people because that is a very popular route and it will, you know, can often save you going through extremely competitive um, um, application processes and interviews, etc. Um, so, yeah, so I'm doing my PhD in, um, in the Energy Institute, as I said. Um, so, and I have this kind of interest in machine learning, so I'm trying to um, apply machine learning in uh, the energy sector and looking to try and make energy systems essentially more sustainable. So, um, in particular, the idea is that um, we've got a lot of renewable energy coming on, um, coming into the GB power system and various other power systems, um, which is great, helping us meet car um, you know climate goals, reducing carbon emissions. Um, but there's various technical challenges with wind and solar because they're because they're variable, because they're intermittent. So when the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow you have some problems about how you actually operate power systems. So uh, there's kind of room for optimization there and machine learning is a very um, promising framework to do that. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment. Um, I really enjoy it. It's, I find the PhD lifestyle really good. I think it maintains 
uh, a lot of the um, benefits of um, doing your undergrad degree, um, but perhaps without the stresses of exams and these kind of things would actually bog you down, I think, a lot. And it, you kind of struggle to look at the um, kind of long-term goals of learning, I sometimes think, when you're doing an undergraduate degree. You're kind of quite uh, short-sighted and you have exams and grades in mind. Um, and yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what I'm up to. Uh, and I suppose, yeah, Basque, how did Basque get me here? Well, I think it's set me up. I, it's only been recently that I've kind of realised how well Basque has set me up. Um, particularly as, as I've seen some other people I've worked with progress at kind of, you know, progress with me starting PhDs at the same time. And it kind of, I've kind of recognised that there are certain things that I learn during my degree, which really are completely alien to people who've, who've just who've, who've, start, who've started at the same time as me so I, so I think in particular um, there's a few well there's a few things, I think firstly having done some independent research I think you know your dissertation is actually a very in general it's a very self driven project a lot more so than other degrees uh, you know you kind of have to go through the motions of a lot of um, a lot of what you do, you, a lot of what you do in a PhD, you know, writing a literature review, developing an idea, seeing it through from start to finish, sometimes with actually not that much uh, direction. Also, there's a huge amount of interdisciplinary research. Um, you know, that's where the funding is you know, in terms of where, in terms of where the government wants to put money. That you know, their big their big challenges tend to be interdisciplinary challenges like tackling climate change. So there's a huge amount of funding. Um, and it would, you know, that's my that's my day job is reading from all sorts of different story um, sources. You know, I have to keep up with policy and economics in the energy sector, and it's statistics, machine learning, coding, reading, writing, yeah, everything. So yeah, it's very varied. Um, and yeah, that's me. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm really curious about your career path and plans because this uh, energy systems was my favourite module too and I did my dissertation on it mm. and was really thinking about doing a master's in this area. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do when you've done the PhD? Do you want to stay in research or work for an energy company or something? Good, like yeah, good question. You know? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm, I'm going back and forth. So I think there are lots of really appealing things about staying in um, academia. Um, so I think... The, the kind of the, the self-directed nature of working at universities really I think is appealing both with like you know you can get up whenever you like and go in whenever you like and that, 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 that whole thing yeah. um, is, I think is pretty is pretty nice and that doesn't and that doesn't you know at least in my office that doesn't end you know people can completely direct their own lifestyles um, I also think like the rigour I think is quite unique to academia like you know, and it can sometimes be feel incredibly slow and frustrating. But you work on you really. There's there's no there's no hiding in academia. You you just can't you can't publish things. You can't sh even show things to you know. Well, I mean, of course you can show it to your peers, but you you can't present things um, if there's even you know minor mistakes. So it's, I think that's really exciting for me. It's like it it forces you to learn at you know, quite a deep level and to be really. Um, really, you know, to be incredibly skilled at what you do, essentially. Um, having said that, yeah, I think at times it feels like there's lots of barriers to actually doing impactful work, like poor management in general, or like kind of basically lack of management. Um, and yeah, and I think, as I say, kind of the, the kind of slowness of it. Um, I think so. Between those two things, I don't know what I'll do. Could could end up working in industry. Might stay on academia. Sorry, not going to answer. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah um, you said it was quite varied, but is it, does it feel quite different to Basque in the sense of you're now taking knowledge from many different areas and targeting it to one thing? Like, does it feel like mm. a similar landscape? Or is it different? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question, actually. Uh, I hadn't really thought about it like that. I think, um, I think it, uh, yeah, I think it feels in principle, actually, it feels similar in the sense that. Um, you kind of you have to synthesize ideas. So yeah, perhaps not so much in terms of you know studying lots of things independently in parallel, but actually you know when if you think about say uh, your dissertation, which is tends to be what well, should be I think like an interdisciplinary <laughs> subject, um, 
that kind of idea of synthesizing, which no one, perhaps no one has done before, no one's going to tell you how to do it. I think that is that is exactly what I was doing at, in my undergrad degree. I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Got to move on.